Hey everybody and welcome back. Mr. Smith here. Um, we're going to continue with our Java tutorial videos today. I'm going to be going over a lab called ATM Machine. Purpose of this lab is to simulate the operations or the algorithms that a real ATM machine would do as you walk up and you put in your ID or your PIN number. Obviously, we don't have a debit card, so it's going to be a little different, but either way, we're just trying to simulate the different algorithms that it uses, such as withdrawing, depositing, checking balance, etc. All right, so we're going to jump right into this. Um, so first things first, make sure you got your net beans up, get ready to start a project. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the lab. All right, so this lab is called ATM Machine. And I'm going to work through most of it, but the difference in this one is going to be I'm going to leave a, probably about 40% for you to finish up yourself. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a program that simulates an ATM machine. All right, we're going to do four things. We're going to do a user and pin security. We're going to do balance information, deposit checks, and money withdrawal. All right, so I have kind of broken it down here into different, uh, I guess, lists of instructions. Um, so first you have the account security, you have the account management stuff, and then there's two sections. There's added fun and super added fun. All right, so I am going to set up most of this, and I'm going to make a part two video later where we're going to do the for added fun and super added fun stuff later. So as of right now, um, we're just going to start with account security. So go on over to your NetBeans, uh, go to your gold, uh, gold box with the green plus. That's how we always start our new project. And we're doing a Java application. And I'm going to call mine ATM Machine Video, all right, because this is the project I'm doing in the video. Uh, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all the comments I don't need just so I have some extra space to work with. Um, feel free to leave your comments if you would like. All right, so let's see where we're going to start. Uh, so we're going to go up here to the notepad, or sorry, not the notepad, to the PDF. All right, in order to get started, we will first need to create a user slash pin combination that allows users to log in. We will do that by creating a couple global constant variables at the top. And I actually, um, at the top of our program, di directly under where we create our scanner. All right, so right there, we know we need to create a scanner first, and then we need to do our final variables. So to do a scanner, remember, step one, import. All right, so that's import java.util.scanner. All right, step two is to create the scanner. So that is static scanner keyboard equals new scanner system dot in. Just like that, all right? So we've created our scanner. So at this point, it wants us to create these global constant variables, all right? So in math, a constant is something that does not change. It's the same thing as programming. Global means it's outside of the main method, so it can be used in all methods. All right, so basically we need to put these two lines right here. All right, private static final string username and private static final int pin. All right, we need to put those up under our uh, scanner we created. So private static. All right, the word final makes it a constant. All right, so the keyword to make something a constant is final. Now we're going to say string uh, username. We indicate a constant by using all caps. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. My username is Smitty. And you know, I'm going to make it all lowercase. That way it doesn't get confusing. And then private static final. And then we have an int that's going to be our pin number. And of course, I'm going to use the pin that I use on my bank account because, you know, y'all will never you know, figure out, find me or anything. So that will be 5555, classic pin number. All right. So username Smitty, pin number 5555. All right. So we go back into the lab. We've got our, we've got our stuff set up. So we will then be able to use these variables throughout our program. That's because they're global. All right. When we prompt the user for their credentials, we need to make sure that they match. 
Alright, so let's do that. We will prompt the user for username and PIN. So main method is where all of our instructions go. So the very first thing we need to do is prompt for username and PIN. So I'm going to say uh, username, right? A little space there. Um, I know I just typed print line. I'm going to change that to print. So that way they can type right next to it. And then when they click enter, it'll go down a line. Print pin. Uh, now I like username being lowercase. All right. So username and pin. So now we need to store these. So username is a string. So when we store it, we need to have string. Uh, name input, I like name input there, is equal to keyboard.next and I'm going to do line in case they do put in more than one word, I don't know, it's weird to do that, but maybe. Alright, and on this one uh, we have an int, so int pin input is equal to keyboard.next int. All right, so notice we're using different methods within the scanner class, next line and next int, because we have two different variable types. We have a string and an int. Okay, so we have prompted them and stored it. Let's check out what the lab says. We will need to check if the username and pin that they entered match the final variables. All right, users should be informed that their account has been locked temporarily and the program should end. All right, so Basically, we need to check this, and then if it's incorrect, we'll tell them that their account's locked, and we will we will end the program. All right. So if um, if username right, because that's our global variable up here. Dot equals. All right, we don't want to do ignore case because we want them to match perfectly. Like, if I had all caps Smitty, that's not the same as lowercase Smitty when it comes to a username because you want them to match. This is an ATM machine. All right, so username equals to name input. That was our variable for the name. All right, if that's the case, then we're going to do our program. Else, we're going to say... All right, uh, username or pin was incorrect. You are now locked out. All right, so basically we're just going to lock them out. All right, so if they get it right, then we move forward, else they're locked out. All right, but here's the thing. I only checked the username. So we got to check the pin too. So we said if the username is equal and, so double ampersand, the pin is equal. All right, because it's an integer, we have to use two equal signs instead of dot equal, um, and that would be pin input. So basically, if the username and pin are correct, then we're going to do whatever the program is, else we're going to tell them they're locked out. So I'm just going to add a quick print statement here and just say um, you're in. Welcome. All right, let's check and make sure this works. All right, we're just going to check. So I'm going to run this. So username is Smitty and my pin is 5555. It says you're in. Welcome. All right, cool. So now let's get it wrong. I'm going to do Smithers. And one, uh, three, four. Username or pin was incorrect. You are now locked out. Okay, so our logic works so far. Now, instead of just saying you're in, welcome, um, we could say, Welcome to Bank of Prosperity. It's a good name. Welcome to Bank of Prosperity. Um,. Maybe we say, how can I help you? You know, have some fun with it. 
All right, but let's check our PDF, make sure we do everything. All right, so we got this done. So now we need to go into account management. Users should be prompted with a menu that allows them to check the account balance, deposit checks, withdraw money, or log out. Okay, so it needs to repeat until they log out. All right, so it needs to repeat until they log out. So why don't we just use, why don't we create a method for this right here? And we can just call it menu. All right, so we could do all this code right here, but what, let's just create a method called menu. All right, and notice it's red. It's because we haven't created it yet. So let's do that right here above the main method. So I'm going to say public static void menu. Cool. Um, so at this point, we're just going to print out the menu every time, every time we call menu. So I'm going to say, what does it want us to do? Uh, one, two, three, or four. So, um, I say, how can I help you? Then I call menu. So up here, I can just say one is, one is check account balance. Two is deposit checks. Three. is withdraw money and four is log out all right so we need to do a log out all right so we're using modularity here just to save code we, we're gonna need to print this menu several times and I could even like I could even say this welcome I could say the welcome thing here um, I could put that into the menu, but I think it's nice to greet them, then call the menu. All right, so welcome to Bank of Prosperity. How can I help you? And then I print the menu. All right, so after they see the choices, we need to say, um, maybe input or choice. So they need to input their choice or do something here, right? So choice. And we'll make that a print and not a print line so they can enter it next to it. And they're going to enter in one, two, or three, or four. So that is an integer. And we'll just call it choice input is equal to keyboard dot next in. So we're giving them the menu. Then we're saving their choice. And based on their choice, we're going to do different things. So as you can see, they enter a one, we're gonna check account balance, two, deposit checks, three, withdraw money. All right, and four, log out. So one of the things it tells you to do is while it's not four, you're gonna repeat this process. So unless the user, so the menu should repeat after each choice until the user logs out. So we're gonna repeat. All right, let me look at the camera. We're gonna repeat. All right, what am I drawing? As you're sitting there watching me, what am I drawing? Yeah, I hope you're saying loop, all right? So we're gonna need a loop here, all right? So in my head, I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times I'm gonna loop, all right? And that's what we call a sentinel loop because we don't know how many times. Counter controlled, we know. Sentinel, we don't know. So a sentinel loop is our while loop. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to use a while loop and I'm going to say while my choice input does not equal four. So as long as it doesn't equal four, we are going to do keep keep giving them a menu. Um, well, I guess first we need to Technically, first, we need to do something with their first choice. And then we can have the while loop after that. All right. So they're going to input their first choice, which is going to be one, two, or three, or four. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to set up some if statements. And these if statements are then going to go to methods above to do things. All right, so if the choice input is equal, equal to 1, what do we want it to do? Oh, sorry. Guys, sorry. This if statement should be on inside the while loop. So while it does not equal 4, sorry, then we go into our if, and we see if it's equal to 1. If it's equal to 1, we look in our PDF, and we're going to check account balance. So I want to have a method called maybe check balance. Okay, that's what happens if you go to 1. Then else if choice input is equal equal to 2, all right, you guessed it, all right, you guessed it. We're going to deposit checks. All right, we're going to deposit checks. Else, all right, else means everything else, which will be 3. All right, if it's not equal, well, I guess actually, I, I guess we need an else if, because we, what if they enter a 6? So we need to use our else to handle like anything but 1 through 4. So our else if is the 3, which is withdraw money. So if choice input is equal equal to 3, then we're going to have a withdraw money method. So then comes our else. Else. Um... Well, actually, we need else if we need to check to see if it's four. Well, no, we don't actually. No, we don't. All right, we need to do else, and then this will be uh, invalid choice. So they've entered something incorrectly. Then let's uh, print out choice again. So we're going to give them another try, and then uh, we need to scan that in. So choice input was our variable to scan in that choice, and that's going to be keyboard.next int because they're entering numbers. All right, so there we go. All right, so just to walk through it, while they're not saying to log out, while they say not to log out, if they input a 1, we'll check balance. If they input a 2, we'll deposit checks. If they input a 3, we'll withdraw money. If they input anything else, we'll tell them it's an invalid choice, and we'll ask them for a new choice. Does that sound good to everybody? Sounds good to me. Let's try it. There might be a mistake here, but we don't know till we try it. All right, so at the end of this if else, we always have to ask them for a new choice. Um, so I guess really we didn't need this else. We just needed huh okay yeah yeah so you get guys in programming there's always multiple ways to do this. I'm kind of right now floating between two ways unfortunately. Um, so invalid choice, then they enter their choice and we scan their new choice, um, and then et cetera, all right? And then as long as it's not four, we keep going. So I'm not even going to say invalid choice. We'll just say choice, all right? We won't tell them it's invalid, so that way if they enter a four, it works. All right, so up here, now we need to make a method for each one of these. We need a check balance, we need a deposit check, and we need a withdrawal money. So at the top, we're going to say public, static, and then I'm not sure about the return type yet, but I'm just going to say check balance. All right. I'm going to come back to the return type. All right. Then public, static, not sure about my return type, and then withdraw. Oh no, deposit checks. Okay. 
Then the third one, public static withdraw money. All right. So I am leaving these underscores to represent the return type. So you got to think about it. If I'm going to have a method that checks a balance, what do I want to come out of that method? Well, it's going to be a balance, right? Which is money, which is decimals, which is a double. All right, so I need this to return a double. If I'm going to deposit checks, I'm depositing into my account. What do I need deposit checks to do? Well, when you deposit checks, I guess it gives you a balance at the end, right? But we could just use check balance to look at the balance. So I'm going to say void. I'm going to say we don't want any information. We just want to deposit checks. That's it. All right. And withdraw money. Well, if you're withdrawing money, yeah, I mean, you don't really need a number back. You just want the money. So um, I'm going to call that void too. All right. So we have these three methods in the Word document. It tells you exactly what to do. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do check balance in this video. I'm gonna leave deposit checks and withdraw money for y'all to do. And let's just see if you can do it. All right. Let's see if you can work through it on your own without any extra enrichment from me. All right. So to check the client's balance, we need to display the user's account balance. Well, to do that, we need to set create the balance first. So globally. I'm just gonna say private because I don't want anybody outside of my ATM machine to know my balance. Uh, I'm just gonna say private balance. I don't, well, it's gotta be static. Static balance is equal to, I don't know, your boy Smith, you know, he got the bag. So $5,645.13. All right, that's my balance. Oh, sorry, I don't think I need static. Oh my gosh, I forgot to put double. I do need static, I forgot double. All right, um, so you gotta put the type, money, decimals, doubles, all right? Private static double balance. So at this point, the user just wants to check the balance, so you return balance, all right? We're returning a double because this is global we can use it anywhere in this program because it's global. It's at the top. All right, so we're just returning the balance. When you deposit checks, you're going to update the balance here, and then you'll check it there. So at this point, now that I've created these methods, you'll see that these red lines have gone away because check balance now exists up here. Deposit checks exists, all right? So let's run it. You know, I've could have made mistakes, you know, I'm I'm human. I'm a human programmer. So let's just run it and see what happens. So I'm gonna run this. Username Smitty Pen 5555. Oh, that's not right. Oh, I made it all lowercase. Hey, at least I know that works. Let's run it again. Alright, Smitty 5555. Oh, how can I help you? I want to check my balance. Okay. Oh, so check balance. It returns, but then doesn't do anything else. So I have messed up. Hmm. I have messed up. So how do I fix it? All right. Hold on. Let me stop this so it's not running. All right. So how I fix it is we're checking the balance, but we're not actually printing it out. So we need to say system.out.print, and then I'm going to put a money sign because it's going to um, – I'm going to put a money sign because it's going to give us a number. So now let me try it, all right? Smitty, one, two, three, four. I want to check balance. Oh my god, the dreaded infinite loop. How could I? Ugh, being a programmer is not fun. All right, well, here's the issue, guys. 
Um, we're never asking them to update their choice anywhere. So what it's doing is choice is equal to one right now and it's printing this out and then it goes back here and choice is equal to one, it prints it out. So it's just constantly looping because we never change the choice. So what we have to do is we actually have to put this statement inside of each of these. Okay. And maybe we want to print the menu too. So maybe before they put in their choice, we put menu, we call menu again, all right? And this is called modularity. If not, you would have to retype the menu every time. But if we just call menu, it goes up here and it prints the menu. So, okay, I'm still, look, check it out. Y'all are gonna like that, all right? Oh, look at my, my infinite loop is still running and come on, I can't even get output. Where's window? Uh, window output. Okay. So it's still running. It's still running. All right. This little red block will stop that. Then I'm going to click the X. All right. So let's try it now. So all I did was I added the menu statement and then asked for their choice again. So let's try it. So Smitty 5555. Five, five, five. Okay. I want to check my balance. Oh. Now it gives me the balance and it asks for the choice again. So I'm going to run that again. Smitty, 5555. Five, five, five. Check my balance. Okay, check my balance. Check my balance. It works. If I click log out, oh, program ends. Oh, we're in business. We're cooking with gas. All right. You know what? I am going to go back and add this invalid right here. Invalid choice. All right. I wasn't sure I wanted that there, but now I'm thinking I do. All right, so let's let's try my invalid. All right, Smitty, 5555, five, five, five. check my balance, then I order a six. Invalid choice, a seven, invalid choice. Yeah, I did want that there. All right, but then I go enter a one again. Oh, we're checking the balance. All right, 500 and 600, 5,645 dollars. Okay, so then I would enter a two, and well, oh, well, didn't do good, did I? Smitty, five, 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 five. So now I want to deposit checks, I enter a two, and it doesn't do anything. And the reason why is because I have not written the code for deposit checks or withdraw money yet. Because guess what? That's your job. So in the PDF, you should ask the user how many checks they have, prompt them for the amount of each check and add the amount to the balance. So they could say three checks, then you'll have to say how much is check one, and you'll say $100, check two, $200, and check three, maybe 45 cents. And you update the balance every time. All right, so that is what I want you to do. All right, I want you to try to work on deposit checks and withdraw money, all right? And then make sure you're updating the balance um, and then you'll be good. Um, I will be coming out with a part two for this video later where I go through this and I do the added fun and the super added fun. Um, but I want to give everybody a chance to work through this before I go and show you how it's all done. Um, so I do appreciate you watching. As always, please, please, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.